Today we are continuing our series of a deep down dig through the OpenBSD install into setting up the desktop system and anything I can cover regarding that subject to getting, we're going to get this to a nice functional, you know, uh, speedy and usable desktop system on this ThinkPad. And what I'm doing on this ThinkPad can definitely be applied to other machines too. I'm just using this ThinkPad as an example machine. Now, first, what we're going to do is we're going to get the network installed. Now, I have the uh, Ethernet plugged in. So we're, let's go ahead and get our firmware for Wi-Fi installed so we can just use the Wi-Fi and not have to string a cable across the living room <laughs> to, <laughs> to get this thing powered with Internet. And if, if you're running a computer that doesn't have an Ethernet port, I do have a video. You can look at my video history. I have a video about installing. It's called Install OpenBSD Firmware Like a Boss. So you can check that video out and uh, it'll show you how to do an offline install of firmware. But we're not gonna do that today because I got an ethernet. So, so let me log in here. Actually, we'll just do this from uh, from TTY because it's a lot easier for you to see on, this, on the screen here. And if you ever wanna get to TTY, it's just control alt F1 through uh, F, uh, F4. Those are different TTYs like TTY0, TTY1, etc. And then Control F5 will bring you back to the X server. Okay, so glitch. Let's see if I can remember the password I set up yesterday. There we go. Okay, and let's see if we have a connect and a connection just automatically from the Ethernet cable. There we go. Uh, for some whatever reason, my, my local DNS on, on here was not uh, working properly. So we'll have to fix that. There's a command that we'll do is we can do FW update and get all our needed firmware. Okay, now, now that we have our firmware, I can, here, let me adjust this a little bit. I can unplug the ethernet I'll set to the side, but I'll probably trip over it later. And then what we'll do is VI. So now, normally, if you are going to set up a hostname config file for Ethernet, it would just be hostname. So my Ethernet interface is called EM0, and you can find that out by typing if config. So it'd be uh, hostname.em0, and then you would just create a full file that says DHCP. That's if you didn't create one during the install. Okay, and here actually, I can see this is off. Let me move this, there we go. But we're gonna set one up for the uh, uh, the wireless interface. Now, interface config, and you can see the different interfaces that I have. The one that I want is IWN0, so we're gonna do VI, etc. Hostname dot IWN0. Sorry, I kinda got the hiccups. So we're gonna start the file like this, okay? So it's gonna be LLADDR. That stands for link layer address, which also is known, it's just another way of saying the MAC address. And we're gonna set the MAC address to be random. So LLADDR random. And then you just set up network ID. And this is where the name of your network would go. And then WPA key. And then the, uh, the uh, password or passphrase for your router, just like that. And then you would type DHCP. Now I'm going to uh, put in my actual uh, uh, network ID and WPA key, uh, but I'm gonna cut that out obviously. And if you also, if you look up the if config or interface config man page, um, if it, depending on how your router is set up, they have the different options to uh, for different types of router setups. But the most common ones are gonna be network ID and WPA key. Um, some do use other types of key, you know, passphrase kind of combinations, stuff like that. And there is uh, some other, you know, neat features, but I'm 
we might probably eventually, you know, down the line, we'll do a video on if config. But uh, for now, let me uh, put in the actual thing, but you won't see it because I don't want you guys knowing my network name. Okay, and that's all we had to do. Now, let me clear the screen real quick here. And what we can do is we can run a shell script that's located in the uh, etc folder. So it's sh, etc. It's called net start. Okay, so it'll just start the network right away. So uh, also it will fix file permissions in that file I just created because the file wasn't created by the installer. And if, if you want to avoid having to do all this, you, just, you can just have the ethernet hooked up and set this up during the install process. Cool. And we should have connection to the Wi-Fi unless I'm getting that DNS issue again. I'm gonna set up local inbound anyway, so I don't, it's not gonna be a really big, big issue. Let's see here. Ping. Yep, we got a ping and we're not connected. Okay, perfect. So that's setting up wireless in OpenBSD. You can see how just insanely simple that is. I mean, that just, any day of the week that beats using like uh, IW and WPA supplicant, NetPlan and uh, Network Manager in Linux. I mean, just ultra simple tools to work with. And then the last thing what we're gonna do it, or before we uh, uh, start doing some stuff in Xorg is I'm gonna upgrade this to the current branch. And by doing so, you would just do um, syspatch minus s for snapshots. Or no, sorry, not syspatch. Sys upgrade. Syspatch is a tool you would use to patch the system. So if I was going to continue on with this, uh, what this is called the release branch, and uh, I would turn it into a stable branch by running sys update, and that would apply security patches uh, for uh, security vulnerabilities and reliability fixes. But we're just gonna run sys update, <laughs> not sys patch, sys update minus s for snapshots. Up, sorry, upgrade. God. I'm just having one of those nights. I'll probably edit out some, I might edit out some of this stuff. All right, sys upgrade, there we go. Let's hope my brain function properly for the rest of the night. go into TTY just one more time so you guys so I can install a terminal so you guys can see bigger letters because the, the default X term the fonts are very tiny and you won't be able to see what I'm typing so let's see if we have a ping yep so we're all good with the ping and let's start, let's just install one package that'll help in Xorg and then I can stop using a TTY. Even though I kind of like TTY, it has a nice vibe to it. So I'm installing my favorite terminal emulator, it's called Sakura. I just, I just like it, I don't know. I've always used it, it's always worked for me, so I'm not ultra particular about terminal pro uh, emulators. I know some people, you know, they really like to use like Alacrity and stuff like that, but not, not me. And some uh, major, uh, I've been seeing some major changes to the package add utility uh, for the upcoming 7.2 release. So really excited. So 
So just in case you missed it, the command to upgrade to the current branch is do as sys upgrade minus s. And also if you're wondering why I would want to use the current branch, is because I do prefer to use the current branch because in OpenBSD, for the most part, the current branch is very stable and um, you get more up-to-date packages and um, I don't know, you get to try out new features and you know, it's just, it's, it's more exciting. And the reason why I, you know, I, I, I say, you know, it, the current, uh, the current branch is great for desktop use is because all the developers are using OpenBSD on their desktop. They are dogfooding OpenBSD. So um, they, they won't just break things because they're not using it or they're just running it in a virtual machine on a Macintosh uh, or a, you know, like a, a MacBook. So uh, that's it, it. I think the rule is they're not allowed to like completely break the system. Now you might see occasional fluctuations in performance that does happen sometimes. You know, sometimes for a couple snapshots for a week or two, things seem to be not as speedy. That has happened before. Um, sometimes you'll see uh, hardware acceleration break in certain packages, like that happens in Firefox for some reason. Um, and, and also in OpenBSD, uh, just because you have hardware acceleration working across the board, that doesn't mean that certain programs might not, like they might, it might break in those programs for whatever reason. So this is partially why I don't use Firefox and OpenBSD as much, because for some reason it has issues with that. And Chromium seems to be pretty consistent that um, hardware acceleration is always functioning in Chromium, in the Chromium port. That's partially why I like to use it, because of its performance in OpenBSD. Um, I don't have a dog in the fight in the whole browser war thing. Um, I've made a video about browsers, you can check it out. Seems like the network's working a little faster. I don't know what was going on. It took almost uh, 20, 30 minutes to ins to upgrade this system. That was extremely slow. I don't know what's going on on their end. That's definitely not my internet connection because my internet I connection is running just fine. I, I have a 4K video uh, streaming in the background. So I don't know. I don't know what, what the deal was, but. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh man, look at all those dependencies just for a terminal emulator. Yeah, but most of the programs I'm gonna use on the system are all gonna use those same de dependencies. They all share dependencies, and I really don't care. <laughs> if you wanna, you know, compile ST and have like the simple terminal, go right ahead. Because most of the programs I'm gonna be using on the system are gonna use all these shared libraries. Like if I install this, like if I install GIMP, the GNU image manipulation program, it's gonna use like the half of this stuff already out, out the gate. And so will Chromium. Okay, and now we're good to go. So let's switch on over to X11 or OpenBSD, as OpenBSD calls it, Xenocara. Okay, and we can run I don't have a mouse hooked up per se. 
but which sucks because this window manager requires a mouse. Maybe I should go grab my wireless mouse real quick. All right, I'm gonna go grab it real fast. There we go. No, 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 you don't. Okay, not a huge fan of FE window manager. As you can see, it's kind of wonky, but that's okay. Cause um, I'm gonna use my favorite window manager, which is called Storefez or Starfish window manager. And it's a fork of rat poison and it's very, very good for just keyboard usage. There's a reason why they call it rat poison because the rat is the mouse, so it kills the mouse. Anyways, let's see, what do I, need? oh yeah. So one last thing is I need to make sure um, that I have up-to-date firmware and the system is fully merged really quick. main reason why I download it so you can see it. Okay, so the system is merged and the system is updated. So in the next video, we are going to um, install my packages. I'm going to set up my window manager and then I will set up the, um, let's see, I will set up all the necessary things for hardware acceleration and um, just a little bit of uh, performance uh, tweaks that we can do, uh, just minor. And I'll explain um, kind of a new approach that I've been taking with the uh, Intel GPU uh, that I, uh, some advice I got from a developer uh, that I kind of like that works a little bit better. Um, and then once we get the window manager set up the way I like it, I already have my config, so it's not, it's, it'll be quick. We'll, um, we'll configure the X11 startup and then um, we'll set up OpenBSD frequency utils to, um, uh, to regulate the heat and fan usage. Because you can see right out the gate, let's see here, we'll, go, we'll use a tool called Sysstat. I think it's right, yeah. So we'll see that right away it's running at about 56, just, just not really doing anything. Um, so there's a script or a daemon written by an OpenB, OpenBSC developer named Celine. Uh, she writes a really, a really neat blog, really cool uh, stuff. Uh, the frequency uh, util will set it to 55 degrees at all times. So no matter what I'm doing, it's gonna stay at this 55 degrees. Like right now, the way this is, if I turn on a YouTube video and start doing a ton of stuff, this will shoot up, you know, into the high 60s, maybe even 70, you know, especially just this laptop sitting on a flat surface. Oh, let me go up here. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of FP Window Manager. But anyways, um, so yeah. So the next video, we're gonna step forward. It's already late and um, just the up, <laughs> I'm really annoyed that the upgrade process took that long. For whatever reason, both the, the cloud network and the FTP servers on there and we're just going really slow. So that'll be that. And uh, look forward to continuing this uh, on the next episode. Uh, this is RootBSD out.